Well, the Battle of Worcester was the last battle of the Civil War. It had been dragging on for nine years, and it ended here on the streets of Worcester when the Royalist cause was totally annihilated by Cromwell's troops. The commandery was the, the site where the, the troops that were fighting for Charles, King Charles II, were, um, were billeted. So it was, it was the Royalist headquarters, as it were, the site where all of the Royalist troops were. And they were there from about two weeks before that battle, setting out their defences and um, setting up Fort Royal to be a defensive centre for, for the battle. If this wasn't a jolly thing that was going on, that the population of Worcester was very low at the time and then twice as many soldiers turned up and started billeting the city, making preparations. Then two weeks later they were descended on by twice as many parliamentarian soldiers. It damaged the city, that we were repairing fortifications on a daily basis. It, it was a quite harrowing time. It's the preparations for war. Charles was working in a world where he just wasn't relating to everyday people. He saw everything that he had as being um, his right to own because of being the king, whereas people on the ground were, were fighting for their right to have their own say in their future at that time. When Charles came here, he asked all the Worcester citizens to join his army, and very few did. On one occasion, a Scottish army passing through stole all the cattle from Worcester, and this, this was the food that the citizens of Worcester relied on. So certainly when Charles Stuart arrived in August 1651 with 16,000 soldiers, the population of Worcester would only have been about 5,000. They had to call for food from all the villages around, as far out as Evesham and Malvern, as, as well as trying to feed the citizens. They were trying to feed an army of 16,000 as well. This is a, a picture that comes from an album we have called Treasures of the Stuarts. This one is a really interesting picture because it's a picture of uh, Charles's armour and it really shows the difference between how the kings were thinking at this time and what it was really like on the ground. Clearly the most beautiful, most gorgeous piece of armour but not enormously useful on the battlefield. Charles, when he came back, when he was restored to the monarchy in 1660, decided that he wanted to completely bring back all of the trappings of, um, of monarchy. He still had quite a lot of restrictions because of the way Parliament was then set up, but he was determined to have all the pomp and circumstance of, of, of monarchy back. There was an interaction room um, next door, which I don't remember last time I was around, with um, the various regiments of the battle. And obviously when you're given a colour for the various regiments, you're not told what those regiments are when you first arrive. Um, so that's where you kind of learn um, the time frame of the battle next door and you can actually, in a way, see them because you've got the models that move. And I think it's great for the kids because they, they, it's a bit more interactive than just reading about what happens because you can see what's happening at the same time. Even if you've been before, it's definitely worth a revisit, they've changed it, um, they've made it a lot more accessible and it's still, it's still a fascinating building with a, um, an amazing history.